Can you say one and zero oh yet? Can you say one and zero? Oh? Everybody got a story, man. Play with your heart today. Let that feed you. Let that draw you, man. We gonna go out there. We gonna punch them in their mouth, man. Let's make this our house tonight. Come on, have some fun. Start to finish, baby. Let's go. All gas, no break. Hey folks, thank you for joining us as we welcome you to the show that the pros watch. I'm James Brown. You know what? I think we could say this past weekend had classic touchdowns, mm -hmm. no doubt, smackdowns, and splashdowns, which we will explain <laughs> wow. a little bit later. But my guys, they're all dried off and they're ready to go. What do we learn? Quick question. These three coaches, what do you think they have in common? Frank Reich with the Indianapolis coach started off poorly last year, right. got to the postseason, lose Andrew Luck, still getting it done. Sean Payton, I don't think he gets enough credit. No Alvin Kamara, I no agree. problem. No Drew Brees, no problem. And even Mike Tomlin, given the cast of characters that he had, when we look back on it now, not a bad job. What do they have in common? They all adjust. When something mm. doesn't go perfectly, which football is all about adversity, they find a way to another way to get it done. Mm. And I think all three, all three of them have proven that so that's good good observation on your part what did I learn this weekend well I watched it last night uh, the New York Jets playing the New England mm. Patriots and Sam Darnold said I'm seeing ghosts out there mm. and it's not that he's afraid or whatever he just could he was confused yeah he didn't know if the Patriots were going to blitz everybody or drop back and every time he guessed what did he do Does he, he guess he guessed wrong yeah, he, he, he has to have coaches well the, okay Somebody has to I'll let you talk it. about that but so he guessed wrong so that's really tough you know who else with the Patriots did this is last time they did it in the Super Bowl against the Los Angeles Rams and Jared Goff thought oh here they come no they're not whatever and they get you in the guessing game and when they get you guessing you guess we wrong. did this against Eli Manning one of the most difficult things you can do is identify if you're a quarterback who's who's your blitzer when everybody's standing up at the line when everybody looks the when same everybody looks the exact same hey, sit down we're, when, not, when, we're not we're not we're not go ahead, go ahead. you better <laughs> listen to me boy <laughs> good information <laughs> this that good stuff right here okay. you know because there's so many interchangeable pieces Mm -hmm. And that's when Rex Ryan kind of started this all moving around when yeah. all of us started moving. It's hard to count. We call Eli Manning coming in Baltimore. He left with a zero rating as a quarterback because you can't identify that many people. But what did I learn? What did I learn? I learned 100 years of football. You can be a quarterback and a running back at the same time. <laughs> Man, there's something called Lamar Jackson in Baltimore right now. I'm going to rename him to Action Jackson mm. because this boy is playing football. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying. This man has 576 yards. He's averaging 6.9 yards a carry, and he has more rushing yards than seven NFL Teens. So do you right. put him in an MVP discussion? Yes, absolutely. Immediately. Let me, let me tell you something. This kid is doing something. If you watch what he's doing, we've never saw this from the quarterback position. No. We, we've never witnessed nothing like this. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I said this last week. It's, it's not when he runs, it's when he makes up his mind to manipulate the defense yeah. because he's the fastest kid on the field. Correct. Right? So now he looks at the front seven. It's like, oh, ooh, boom, boom, step back. Ray, do you want to see him slide? I, I do. Because okay, I, I want him to play. I want him to play a long time. Yeah, but he doesn't really take. When I watch him, I watch him every week. I don't see him really taking those big hits. That's what's really, really right. impressive. That shows you how elusive yeah. he is. Yeah, very impressive. And I, I know you're pushing for your boy to be in an MVP discussion. But we're missing one guy, hmm. right? And then the quarterback, it's always about the quarterback. But you got <laughs> Mahomes, Roger, Jackson, uh, your guy, uh, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady. What do they all have in common? They win. They're not they're they're not playing better than our guy Kirk Cousins. Oh. Kirk Cousins is the best quarterback in football right now. So you can talk all you want about Lamar Jackson and everything he's doing. <laughs> but right now, America, Kirk Cousins 102. Based is the on, best quarterback ba based in on, football. Based on stats. Ten touchdowns. One interception, 975 yards passing. And how many weeks, Phil? Three. That's the best quarterback in football. End of discussion. You, need you agree to with this. that, Phil? Uh, no, I don't. What? I don't either. All I mean, the last three weeks, he's been the best quarterback in football. But that's uh, for the no. He's, right. It's just too much. So we had to draft the quarterbacks right now. You're going to draft Kirk Cousins. No, he will not. not. The numbers. That's what. That's what. The, that's what. You would not draft about. Kirk Cousins right now if you had to go right hey, now. If you're right now, it's right. Hey, hey, wait, we'll get him some medicine. Let's take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait, you're going to do what now? You're going to check him out. You had to check him. He was 102 the last time I checked. <laughs>
Time for the highlights. And, folks, we kick off with, indeed, a perfect quarterback rating performance, that being A-Rod himself for the Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers, shredding the Oakland Raiders. You okay, Brandon? So you Good take this – Wait, it's so, so – so, You would take Kirk, Kirk, Kirk Cousins over Aaron Rodgers right we all, now. We off the Answer air, the question. We off no, the we're not off yeah. the air. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You know what else Matt LaFleur thinks is cool? Having Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback. Steps up, lost. Right side for Aaron Jones. He's got it. I want Brian to win. Hey, that's the goal. Hey, I want six. It's that kind of ambition that has helped Rodgers reach 350 career passing touchdowns faster than any quarterback in NFL history. Rodgers swings it right side. Touchdown! Packers take the lead. I think I will. Good job, man. The satisfaction when it when it's wide open like that. So I love it. Card takes bootlegs right, looks the end zone, still looking, now races and takes it out of bounds to the oh. two-yard line. Hey! Fumble. That ball clearly came out of his hands and went through the end zone before going out of bounds. It's a touchback and first down Green Bay. That's all gas, no break. And the Packers trying to capitalize. Back to throw, deep drop. Rainbow's right side. Got him. Aaron Rodgers looks extremely sharp. Hell of a catch. Rolling right, Rodgers. Pump fakes, takes it himself. Touchdown. That's a way. Good job. Nice call. <laughs> we don't let up, all right? We said four quarters, right? Rodgers deep drop, throws left side of the end zone, got his man, touchdown! Fourth touchdown of the game for Aaron Rodgers. This is the best the Packers offense has looked consistently all season, folks. Yeah, he got the bat on the ball, too. That was a good spike. Good job! Great spike. Got the bat on the ball. In the air, I thought about this. <laughs> Rodgers quick toss left side got his man first down extending down the left sideline and heading on his way no one will catch him and there is your dagger five TD passes now for Rodgers yeah buddy woo, 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 woo. hey hell of a job yeah, yeah. hey you got five you're back yeah, appreciate it you're back hey I said six, but you got one rushing, so, hey, hell of a job today. Appreciate you, man. Let's okay. stay aggressive. Hey, that's what we got to do. That's, the, that's when we're going to be at our best. I trust you. We were talking earlier this week about just finding a way to get this one. Yeah. We did a little more than that today. I know. Good job, man. Great job. Way to lead us. First time in Packer history a guy completes a game with a perfect passer rating. Hold on, 25 of 31, 429 yards, five, five touchdowns, and the old man ran for one! Right. I tell you. What does that say? Listen, man, when you got all those guys coming together like that in the locker room, right? I, I, I said this a many times. The greatest form of leadership is being the example. Aaron Rodgers is the example. Brandon Marshall, I, he, he's, he's running. Brandon a, left this segment because we were coming He's to running a heavy fever today. A heavy, heavy fever. fever. Heavy okay. fever. Because he said Kirk Cousins <laughs> was <laughs> better than Aaron Rodgers. Yes. If, folks, oh, yeah. if folks had any question, the playmaker himself, Michael Irvin, joins us. <laughs> Phil, all the preseason talk about the difficulty that Coach LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers were going to have. Was that a manufactured story? Well, I think, let's say that there was a little truth to it because 
because Matt LaFleur was not going to give in to Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. You know, he was trying to work that relationship, and it was tough at first. And, you know, you even saw it when he hit him one time. Mm -hmm. You know, what did he say? Don't talk to me so much. Mm -hmm. That's because he's always it. giving him hints in the ear with that microphone. But over time, he's worn Aaron Rodgers down. And why did he wear him down? Because Aaron Rodgers now knows that offense. I like this offense. I like all the diversity of it, the movement, the new plays, the running game, everything about it really makes and Aaron Rodgers is yeah, part of it. But, but, let me say this now, because when I see Aaron Rodgers, I, I, I say, okay, for the physical skill set that this man has, and, and then I look at Tom Brady. Tom Brady plays on schedule football. Three, five, seven step drops ball out mm -hmm. of his hands. Aaron Rodgers plays off schedule football, and I thought Matt LaFleur offense will put him more on schedule, but he's still off schedule. Wait, I'm not, listen, I, I, what I'm saying, Matt LaFleur, you see this love fest? Matt LaFleur should have a love fest. You know what he's doing? He's saying, Aaron Rodgers, thank God I got you. <laughs> because you know what? I'm going to ride you all the way to, to, to a Super Bowl. And, and like a backpack, he's just sitting on Aaron Rodgers' back. Because Aaron Rodgers is making his yes. offense. So does he's LaFleur, making does his LaFleur get yeah. any credit in your mind at all? Oh, well, well, and, and giving Aaron Rodgers the room hey, to wait. breathe wait. and do what he does, Ray, yes, Ray. you give him credit Hold for on. that. And check his, the rest check of his temperature. I'm because you are <laughs> sick. You're not seeing No, you're wait, well, listen to me. Listen we're to me not now. Seeing, we're not seeing the same offense. When you see Tom hey. Brady run offense, it's, you, it's an on schedule. Okay. Offense. You know why he runs it on schedule? Because he has to. What is he going right. to move out? Is he going to move out of the pocket and make the throws that Aaron no, Rodgers does? Going no, Aaron Rodgers is okay. running Matt LaFleur, Kyle Shanahan, and Sean McVay's offense all put together. Right. And then we put some icing on it with Aaron Rodgers. The play selection, the diversity of what I'm they're not doing. You're not hasn't right. been there I'm before. saying Aaron Rodgers is not the icing, he's the cake. <laughs> <laughs> he's the cake. <laughs> you're, you're missing the point. Aaron Rodgers is the cake. Aaron Rodgers can make any offense run. Well, how That's how great oh, he oh, is. Wait, wait. He, so wait. Okay. The, answer the, this question. Why wasn't it so great the last few years? Oh, because he has such a, a disdain with oh, his own head. Oh, oh that's now, it. They oh, had confrontation. Oh, okay. When you watch the Green Bay Packers play, right? If Aaron Rodgers has a bad day, there's no chance they're winning. Mm, Thank right. you. Period. Thank you. When Aaron Rodgers comes to work to play like that, Everybody oh. around becomes better. All I'm saying is he takes offenses and he extends them. Well, that's what a great right. play quarterback right. does. Right. Right. But unlike, he's given him great un, options un, Unlike to start. what Michael was saying with Brady. Brady is not going to extend too much. Right. He's Brady going to stay, stay on the strip. Whatever right. I have, that's, it. that's, that's it. where it's that's coming it. at. Okay. That's why when you start getting to Brady and you get to Brady, the whole ship crashes. Aaron Rodgers, what he's doing right now, you're talking about doing this without his best receiver. Devon, you're talking about Adams being right. out. Man, that's it's crucial he's for Aaron raising Rodgers. people he's like raising Lazar level. that we don't even hear. He's just picking them up and saying, raise you know, Michael, up. I understand. I understand. Look, a lot of it is the scheme, too. They're running the ball. They have many options. They're doing plays that we've never seen them do before. And, look, they got to keep scoring. I'll tell you why they got to keep this going on. Because that defense, uh, it's not that okay. great. Fellas, you, take a look at the best records in the NFC. We haven't yeah. talked about Aaron Rodgers a lot, but look at where they are. Comment on the squad you're looking at and do you think Green Bay has what it takes to be a title contender? Green Bay has what it takes simply, guys, because of the person we're talking about. Right. Aaron Rodgers right. will always keep you in the championship discussion. That's bottom line. But when you want to talk about a team that I just saw on that list mm. that really excites me is when you talk about the Saints. Yeah, the Saints. Because they have, they have a, a, a two-headed monster, and one of them is on the sideline waiting, who's waiting to pick up his Hall of Fame jacket and Drew Brees. But right now, Teddy Bridgewater is doing his thing with Still the Saints. Still Drew Brees' job when he comes back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. No doubt. The Saints Still have down. no weakness. The Green Bay yeah. Packers, think about that game last week against Oakland. Uh, Derek Carr fumbles going in the end zone. They fail to score from like the one inch line. Derek Carr throws an interception in the end zone. Green Bay's defense never stopped Oakland's offense. They are going to have a hard time stopping the run. Too much pressure on the defensive backs. That's why I have to worry about them making that long run to get the Super Bowl. So here we go. Brandon Marshall is going to love this segue here. Because from one hot NFC North quarterback, we turn to another. 
Brandon's guy, who is the best quarterback in the league oh, right now, God. Minnesota Vikings signal caller, Kirk Cousins, back in the groove. Come on in, Brandon. You can stay in touch against the Detroit Lions. Is Brandon, is that right? Is, is Brandon that's feeling right. better? That's right. Are you feeling better? Hey, listen. What you got, hey, Kirk Cousins. Hey, let's hey, go to the highlights. You got an IV? Go to the highlights. <laughs> let's, let's all pass a hat because Michael needs clothes. <laughs> you know, the same outfit. <laughs> Let's go collect number three. Yeah. Let's go collect number three together. The Vikings hoped they'd fare well in the Lions' den as they sought their third straight win. But Detroit made it hard for Minnesota to keep up with the Jones. Marvin Jones Jr., who had three first-half touchdowns. Looks left, throws out there, caught. The Vikings are giving thanks for a rejuvenated Kirk Cousins. Kirk looks good out there. What I told y'all from the jump, Pat. Statement right there. It's a statement. The game was tied at halftime, but the Vikings eventually pulled away. Looking for CJ Hamm. Found him. Touchdown! Matthew Stafford and Jones Jr. connected for their fourth touchdown as Stafford became the fastest quarterback in NFL history to accumulate 40,000 passing yards. But that wasn't enough to keep the Vikings from their third consecutive victory. L.A. is home to the Stars. Jalen Ramsey, the Rams' newest star, was part of a defense that allowed just one touchdown. Pressure in his face. This time he'll have to eat it. Sack back at the 21. Lobs the ball to Gurley. Out of the backfield. Over the shoulder. He brings it in. Touchdown, L.A. Jason Garrett never stopped smiling Sunday night. From the first possession, Dallas dominated. Football! Cowboys have the ball! Just the beginning, what? Just the beginning. Just the beginning. Tavon Austin in motion coming to the left, and they will pitch it right to Austin. He's got a first down, 15, cuts it to 10, running to the 5, to the pylon, touchdown, Tavon Austin! The Eagles never knew what hit them on both sides of the ball. Malcolm Jenkins has a chance to take Elliott down. Elliott just runs through that. And they're going to give it to Elliott. Coming left, pounding at the goal line. Touchdown, Elliott. I told you, just wait on it. Just wait on the money. It's coming to you. They can't stop us. They can't stop us. Keep hitting them in the mouth. Keep hitting them in the mouth. They can't stop us. Wait, 
Needing extra help to contain Ezekiel Elliott, Philadelphia neglected to cover. Play fake, boot to the right, and it's an easy lob to Jarwin in the end zone. Touchdown, Cowboys! The stunned Eagles were left grasping for answers. Cowboys recover. When it rains, it pours. And this is a rout. The win was the Cowboys' fourth straight against Philadelphia. And their largest of the series in 21 years. Hey, now, we do know that whenever Michael comes on a show, we have to talk Cowboys. Oh, you know man. that, right? Yeah. Is that a good uh, thing? I have a reason. We yeah. got to talk about those first place As Cowboys. Said, on this show, Michael clearly has a voice. <laughs> Players have a voice, and Cowboy fans have a voice. But guess what? So do our viewers who don't like the Cowboys. Michael, this was written in by a viewer who signed his name as K. Irvin is an uncontrollable and egotistical mouth who makes your show Worse, you got the floor. Kay, listen, I understand you're an Eagle fan, and but you're, you, two out of three ain't bad. I, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't make the show worse. The, so, so that's the only part that is wrong right there. But the other two, he's absolutely right. <laughs> I am big and loud, and, and I'm not trying to be controlled. And you've been like that your whole life. when I'm talking about my Cowboys. Your whole life. Right. right? You were the hurricane your whole life. You get. This there are you get. other tweets as well, too. Ray, give him a sample of the rest. Yeah, let me, let me, let me read this <laughs> tweet, okay? <laughs> Michael Irvin has lost his mind. <laughs> we are four and three. Please refrain from talking about the Super Bowl for the Cowboys. Hold your thoughts. I'm just reading. Hold, I'm hold just reading. Yep, hold on. Right, yep. but, hold on. We got more. We got go more. Ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But, but does he not know? Does right. he not know? The, the, the guy that just used your tweet. Does he not know that the Patriots were one and two last year? Mm. And they were thinking about Super Bowls. That, and they finished with that, the Super Bowl. Uh, it ain't that, never too early. That's, let's go to that's the, the next the Patriots, one. though. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Let's go to the next one. There's more, Mike. So nobody's going to talk about Michael Irvin on national TV sweating like a rotisserie chicken? Like, yo, what are they referring that. to, Michael? I, I don't know why. Sometimes, you right? Know, well, let me give you one more. Well, well, let me give you one more. It's all good. Let me give you one more. Let me let me go to one more tweet they read. Give me one more. Michael Irvin reminds me of a of deep, the deep South, South pastors <laughs> boy, that I'm sweat while they yell at sermon. At boy, he, hey, it was a good hey, sermon. It's all hey, good. Hey, Go hey, he might be right there. Uh, let right? The he might be say right amen, there. Right? Let the church say amen. Hey, Just hey, because bishop... I use the gospel to get you better in <laughs> life, I give you the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which is the truth, which is the truth. That's the gospel. <laughs> yeah, I understand why they're making that assessment of a Southern Some pastor. are saying that they want to give Michael a goss pill. A goss pill. pill. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next one? Go ahead. Yes, Let's I talk some Cowboys. I'm one of the ones that believe that the Cowboys are a contender. That's what I'm saying. Talk to me about the Cowboys. What do they need to fix? What, what they have to fix, Brandon, is they have to see every game as an important game. Consistency. They, consistency. They don't have it. What I saw Sunday was resolve, and I'm saying, no. The, co the coach in Philadelphia said, we're going down here to win this game. Demarcus Lawrence talked back and said, no, you can't talk like that coming in our house. Right, because I, I was going to ask, what, what happened against the Jets? I, I can't even Don't, don't you stutter on me. You don't, I, I, you don't I can't stutter. Tell you. No, you don't that, stutter. This is the one time I have to. And, and, and I so, don't understand. And, and so but, but it's what we're question. talking about. But the reason they why I ask the question understand. is because, you know, you know, similar to what Brandon is saying, like, I, I really think that this team, right. I'm telling you, this team is a very talented team. Right. But when you talk about the consistency of showing up the work, Every day. A lot of people think showing up to work is when the lights come on. No. Showing up to work is Monday through Saturday. Right. I tell people right. all the time, that's what they paid me for. In my career, they paid me for Monday through Saturday. Sunday was the fun day. Sunday was a fun day. Right. Sunday was the day that you do it. And when you think about these Cowboys every week when they show up, what's important? Because when you figure out what's important, you hold each other accountable. Right. Take a look at the graphic here. And we talked about the Green Bay Packers and right. how serious they are. Take a look. We don't see the Dallas Cowboys, but in your mind, right. Are they title contenders who belong in that mix? In this mix? Yes. Oh, yeah, the Cowboys belong in this mix, and, and they will be in that mix. Now, there's mm -hmm. some good teams in there. Man, we don't, we don't give San Francisco 
enough credit mm. for what they are doing. I mean, I, I, I said it before and I'll say it again. I, 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 as much as right. I hate the run game, I love watching San Francisco mm. because right. they design such great it's, run schemes mm -hmm. and doing such a great job. That great it, it's simple. I, I, I it's think a little exciting. Are you, are you trying to say San Francisco is not they good? Do, they no, do no, the right I'm things well. Right. They can oh. run the ball. Right. Ezekiel Elliott now is going through his preseason. Right. Yes. He, he didn't have a preseason, didn't have an offseason with the team. Randall Cobb, Amari Cooper. All right. They have a quarterback that can protect the ball. So they can win the turn over battle every single week. Yeah. And then they have a defense that is simple enough, but it's coming, dominant when they're on the same page. coming off those ends. Hey, we have to Quinn move along, but let me ask you two coming something. Off those in terms now. of standing Quinn up and, and facing the critics, is there anybody better? Facing Nobody. The that's, my, that's my guy. I don't mind. Uh, I don't playmaker, mind. I don't mind. I'm very confident if you right. <laughs> Playmaker. I don't mind. Hey, this is, a perfect, this is a perfect yeah, segue. Say, Turn up the volume <laughs> because here's a mic'd up triple header. Hey. Seattle hey. linebacker Bobby Wagner. We got Indianapolis head coach Frank Reich. But up first, New York Giants head coach Pat Shermer wired mm. for the visit of the Cardinals. Hey, hey Mike. Kyle. Hey, hey, Mike. Since, since college, man, I love you, man. Like, you, <laughs> since you just, college? It's crazy. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> since college. <laughs> Have fun today. Yes, Just be you. Take care of your business. Yes, sir. Dreary weather and rookie quarterbacks in both huddles created the perfect recipe for a rushing showcase in the Meadowlands. A rushing showcase for Arizona's Chase Edmonds, that is. He's got a crease at the 15, the 10, the 5, touchdown. To draw play Evans straight ahead 20 15 breaks a tackle at the 10 into the end zone for a second touchdown. Wow, we're making it hard on ourselves, aren't we? All right, here we go. Let's get a drive started here, boys. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's time. After falling behind 17 0 in the second quarter, the Giants scored two touchdowns in less than two minutes. Got Ellison for the touchdown. Hey, Rat. Nice job, buddy. Nice job. Nice job. Nice job. Andy Lee, the veteran punter, is in and blocked by Michael Thomas in the back of the end zone. And recovered by the Giants for a touchdown. Yes! Woo! Chandler Jones had four of Arizona's eight sacks, and Daniel Jones turned the ball over three times. Chopped up by Chandler Jones, and he recovers it in midfield. Oh, boy. Each of the turnovers led to Cardinals points, including the third touchdown of the game for Edmonds. The hat trick. The first two went for 20 apiece. This one goes for 22 yards. A lot to be learned, right? Yeah. Here we go. I wish I had arms like you. Huh? I wish I had arms and legs like you. Nah, I'd be looking at you and be like, damn. I wish my school that be. All pro linebacker Bobby Wagner led a Seattle defense task with stopping the NFL's number one rushing attack. <laughs> Peters. I was seeing the Peters thing. I was trying to figure out who the hell this guy was. Mm -hmm. I forgot about it all. So you just said that. Marcus Peters made a big first impression in his first game as a Raven. No rush five. Wilson steps up, pumps once, throws on the side. I'm intercepted, picked off, and going to the house. It's Marcus Peters. Now the newest member of the Ravens secondary has turned this day back in the Ravens' favor. Hey, this one's become a good defense. This one's become a good defense. Let's go. We're about to blow up. Lamar Jackson tore up Seattle's D, amassing over 100 rushing yards for the third time this season. Lamar Jackson has done it again. He can change directions at crazy angles. He had a fast. With the score tied in the third quarter, John Harbaugh put the ball and the game in his playmaker's hands. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Go for it. 
Jackson will go from the shotgun on fourth down and two. Runs to the right. He's got a seat. He's to the five. He's in. Touchdown, Lamar Jackson. And he is as remarkable as an athlete I've seen play quarterback in a long, long time. Hey, good, bro. Great player, bro. Keep yes, doing your thing. What do you think? Can you say one and zero oh yet? Can you say one and zero? Oh? Let's do it today. One and zero oh today. Okay, one and zero oh today. Yes, we're doing it today, just for you. Sometimes you have to take baby steps, especially against a Texans team that plays grown man defense. Picked up by Merciless inside the five-yard line. All right, shake it off. Shake it off. Hey, just shake that off. Yeah. Good, you already did. It's on them. We got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose, except control of the AFC South. Zach Pascal makes a man miss, jumps over the pile at the goal line. Touchdown, yeah! Zach Pascal! Yeah! 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 Receiver Zach Pascal had a career-high 106 yards and two touchdowns. Here's a little shovel pass to Zach Pascal, looking for the goal line. Touchdown! That's it, Zach. That's good time. Jacoby Brissett threw for a career-high 326 yards and four touchdowns. Touchdown, INDY! Hey, get ready. It's coming. It's coming. He's in the end zone. They throw it, and it's a touchdown. And that's a terrific one-handed grab by Eric Ebron. Deshaun Watson threw for over 300 yards and a touchdown. Rolling to the right, throws back in the end zone. Touchdown, DeAndre Hopkins. Just like that, the Texans are within a score of the Colts. Come on, D. Let's get a turnover. Clock is moving, though. We're down to 35 seconds left. Watson backs to throw. He's got time. Steps up in the pocket. Wheels it deep downfield, and it's bobbled, and it's incomplete. And they're going to say, what do we got? We have an in interception by the Colts. Interception by the Colts, and that should do it. How about that? Victory. How sweet it is. Hey, fellas, we know we don't get too high, we don't get too low, right? We're, we got, still got a long way to go. But that was, that was a great step right there. You know, I'm, I'm loving Frank Reich as a coach. Everything, he's Me pushing too, all the right buttons. And about Jacoby Me Brissett's too. career, he said he is legit. He's the man. The mm. question is, can we say the same about the Colts in general? Especially when we think about Peyton Manning was a quarterback right. there, then Andrew Luck until the abrupt retirement at the top of the season, and now Brissett's getting it done. Well, let's see. Is he the man? Let's see. He's big. He's big yeah. as hell. You can yeah. see that. Can take punishment. He's mobile. That's a pretty good thing in this day and, now, mm. day and age. And he has a really good arm. And he's running a really good, talented, diverse offense with a good offensive line. Uh, the answer is yes, he is the man. Yeah, I, I love what the coach is doing. And let me tell you something, man. We, we talk a lot, even what's going on in Philly. What's going on in Philly is the head coach in Indy is in Indy now and not in <laughs> Philly still. <laughs> Frank Wright knows exactly how to get people ready to play the game of football. That's what he did with Nick Foles back in Philly, and now he's doing an incredible job. The way that they're running they the are, ball, the way that they're running the ball, to your point, to, to Brissett, to help him out with that. But I'm telling you, from a defensive perspective, this is almost back to the Dwight Freeney days, to the way they hunt people with four people. Like, they're barely blitzing. They're not trying to – they're saying, our front four is going to be – we're going to – yeah, and they're getting they're there, getting there. The Colts are impressive. I'm, they I really think, impressed me. I think what uh, we already knew, Jacoby's play is validating. We, we, mm -hmm. we deep down knew that he was the real deal. Um, but the person that we're not talking about that should be talked about in the Colts organization is the GM, Chris Ballard. Yeah. 
when Josh McDaniels turned down the job the way That's he did, gift and he world. stood in front of that camera and said, "You mm. know what? The, it's it, the, the rivalry's back on." The way he did it with the tenacity and the passion and the yeah. anger in his face that set the tempo, and that didn't bother mm. him when well it did, but it didn't rattle them when Luck retired. Chris Ballard has done a phenomenal job of bringing together I a agree. great group of people that can go win a championship. So, Brandon, to your point then, and maybe I'll ask the quarterback, do they, in fact, the Colts, have their third franchise-type quarterback in Mr. Watt? Well, I think I answered that already. Right. But no, I'll no, say, just say it definitively. Yeah, yeah, definitively. He is, yes, he is a franchise quarterback. And on defense, guys that we haven't heard of, they got, they're fast on they're defense. fast. Darius Leonard's Leonard. back. But guys like Jabal Sheard, you know, he's wrecking people up back there. Justin Houston's there. Danico Autry, who, I don't know, he wasn't a factor out in Oakland. But, man, that front four, or no, front three, four, whatever you want to call it, they can really get after the quarterback. They well, like Brissett. Just that yeah. team likes they love, yeah, they they love, love that kid. The, the people think, like think that. About this. Like think that. about this. I, I know this may be a little off topic, but in, at, in, one, in one point there was Tom Brady, Garoppolo, and Brissett. All in the, the same, same room. Yes, right. Wow. You think, wow. You think uh, Bill Belichick has yeah. an eye for talent? But but what you also are saying Unbelievable. is Unbelievable. That Garoppolo and Brissett got to watch the master, and they've learned, and they've taken that to their destinations, and they're implementing that. I, I, I find it to be incredible. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Talking about the two reverends who are on the show here as well, too, when Brandon mentioned that... Uh, it was Josh McDaniels who turned down the job after accepting it, right? Yeah, right. Did Frank Reich even get a call after they won the Super Bowl from the conversations that I've had? He, he no. got one call? I, no. I don't yeah. think he got any call. Well, wait, no. He, but I look think he did. I think, I'll do, he, he got, I think he got a call from the University of Maryland, but he wasn't good enough for that job. <laughs> but he's good enough for the coach job. Yeah, I call uh, the GM, Mr. Ballard, right after that situation. I'm like, man, I'm sorry you're going through this. And he said, Brandon, trust me, I got the right guy now. <laughs> yeah, he got the right guy. He wow. told me that. Because and I'm, I'm like, man, this dude's probably in his office, lights off, crying. Like, ugh, he had Josh McDaniels, Andrew Luck. And he said, Brandon, I got but the right guy. Hey, I didn't play pro ball. the right guy, man. Because Josh, Josh, when you, you were out there with Josh McDaniels, yeah, yep. and he had to develop Cutler, didn't get that done. Frank Wright is developing Brissett no into this guy. God. That's what makes it. Didn't right play now. at the pro level like you guys, but we all know the definition of luck is what? When Hard opportunity work meets me uh, yeah. We all know that one. Hey, folks, as we return to the highlights, we check in with one of the Colts' rivals in the AFC South. That would be <laughs> the Tennessee Titans on Sunday. What's, what's Phil laughing about? I, I didn't Mike really Grable's know that defense. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know that. Against the Chargers. I was, trying to, we all, yeah. I was trying to figure yeah, like, what? We threw in that. Hi, right, 17. In his first start for the Titans, Ryan Tannehill threw for over 300 yards and two touchdowns. Fires to the back of the end zone. Man is there. Ball is caught. Touchdown, Titans. Pass game coming. Pass game. Logan Ryan tried to stop Phillip Rivers' passing game. But Rivers also ended up with over 300 yards and two touchdowns. Rivers. To Melvin Gordon with his first touchdown of the season. And Rivers taking his shot. Has Austin Eckler right sideline. Caught into the end zone. Touchdown, Charger. We got to keep going, bro. I'm over, bro. With a three point lead and just over two minutes left, the Titans attempted to put the game away. Chargers believe they stopped him. That life. So here we go, down three, 2.35 to go, no timeouts, Chargers ball. Hey, let's go win a football game, man. We got that hard. Big play, this is what they remember, the fourth quarter. Bring it high! Looking left, now throwing, middle of the field, Eckler, to the five. Well, in this fourth quarter, I mean, he's had three huge completions to Eckler. Motion, Eckler. Hand off to Gordon, to the end zone. Oh, it is close. Did his knee hit the ground before he got in? That's not a touchdown. I mean, truly inches away. Hand off goes to Gordon. Waiting for a signal. Hit the ball! Gordon did not appear to get in. Now that we can clearly see it, the ball is coming out. The Titans have won this game. We've never had an ending like this here. We won. We won. 
Fitzmagic may have been back in Buffalo, but it was Josh Allen who gave the Dolphins fits with two fourth quarter touchdown passes. Fires straight down the middle, it is caught, touchdown! Touchdown Buffalo! Cole Beasley, touchdown Buffalo! Although the Dolphins led for much of the game, Micah Hyde's return of an onside kick sealed the Bills' fifth win. It's caught by Micah Hyde in the air, and he's gonna run the other way. Micah Hyde running at the 10, at the five. It's about the best you can get out of this group. Movie! Get your popcorn ready. Today is a movie. This movie started as an action film. A safety. Bridgewater's looking to throw. That ball's caught. Josh Hill touchdown, New Orleans. How are we gonna respond? How are we gonna respond? Come on. Cordero Patterson settling in the end zone. Angles left. Gets to the 10. Opening at the 20. Gets the gas to the 25. Breaks a tackle. He's in the clear. Running right to the 40. Big chase from behind. Steps out of a tackle. 20, 10. It became a drama that escalated with Teddy Bridgewater's 281 passing yards and a touchdown to his fellow quarterback. Bridgewater under center, quick throw. Taysom Hill across the goal line. Touchdown! Latavius Murray was a leading man with 119 yards and two touchdowns. Man, this is a butt whooping deuce. And though the Bears staged a comeback, it fell far short of a Hollywood ending. We're a family and we stick together, all right? We'll be better because of it. We don't cave in, we don't fall apart. All right, the New Orleans Saints, they keep on rolling. Can I keep you guys under control right here? <laughs> no. I was going to call this a receiver segment, uh -uh. but no, it's Ray's Boom Boom Room. Yes, sir, oh, baby. We're going to let them join us and y'all use it for the you day. such a nice guy. <laughs> All right, come on, let's go back and let's watch some receiver routes. I want the two receivers on the show, the playmaker and Brandon, tell us about it. Top of the screen, Michael Thomas. You guys have seen this. Tell us why it works. And do you predetermine this before the game that you're going to make these type of moves? Well, let's see what Michael does here. Okay. Mike, top, top of the screen. Top of the screen. Top of the screen. Let's watch the route. Oh. Thank you. Oh, oh, my goodness. Listen, let me tell you something. My man. goodness. And the one thing, especially young receivers, why they, they – you see the patience that it takes to run this route. And let me tell you what else Mike did. Mike beat I him was... inside. He beat him inside, yes. made him have to recover, and then he breaks back out. Most young guys will be afraid to beat you inside because they think they can't get back outside. You're not good at running these routes. You're Ooh. not. First, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Well, I never ran them. That's what I, I mean. ran them because I beat you on the first route. I didn't need it. Well, you would have been really, <laughs> you would have been really good at running this route. It's because you and Mike Thomas played the game similar with a lot of violence. Right. That's how he got open. Look how aggressive he was right. with the line and right. in and out of his break, speed mm -hmm. and violence. Okay, okay so you're telling me you, wait, the inside. you didn't ask Brandon? Did you pre-plan a move like that before the game, knowing, or did you do it during the game? 100. percent That's game plan. Okay, here so. we go. Watch this. We got another move. This is Amari. Cooper, Ooh. watch what he does. Top of the screen, really sells it. And Amari Cooper's a big dude. Three. Outside oh, what, makes this, what, what makes this route special, and I never was uh, a dynamic route runner like this because I never ran the first route. When you have a double <laughs> move like this, look how he runs the first route. You, that's that's what wins it. It's not what the DB's doing. This is what Mari Cooper is doing. He has the patience and he has the ability to set up the second move. And the first thing you have to recognize is there's going to be man coverage. And that he was right, outside that, of that, him. Right, too. that's a man coverage. He's outside. And, and, and then Amari Cooper goes and sets him up perfectly inside. That's that's a game plan. That's a game and plan. The one he knows that. And the one sense from a defensive perspective. The corner. It's always something called keep your eye on your luggage. Yeah. <laughs> when he threw the first move, he's already looking at the quarterback. Yes. Mark Cooper's already gone. Right. But, 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 but well, what I mean by well, game plan, no, I uh, uh, because a lot of those yeah. cornerbacks do what we you call. You knew that going into the game. They clue. Or, they clue. Well, let me explain what cluing is to people that don't understand. Cluing is 
when they're looking not at the receiver, but, but they're looking the, at the quarterback. quarterback. And if the quarterback drops three steps, they drive because they know it's a five-yard round. If they drop seven steps, then they know it's a 20-yard yeah. round. Yeah. If they drop five, right. they go to the This is what I'm This is what I'm doing. I'm coming out. I'm going to run that first move. That's called an under route, five-yard under route. So I'm going to come up, and I'm going to run it. I'm going to gather information. Then I'm going to go back to the sideline. I'm going to say, hey, Phil, I think we have him on the sluggo. So keep that in mind. Right. You may, you may want to get to that next time we come back Great to point. that first All right. right. Got to speed it up a little, you talkies here. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Watch this one here. Valdez Scantling for the Green Bay Packers. Here this he is. This is great right here now. This is what LaFleur is uh, bringing. Play action pass. Loose. Oh, look at that move. Got the can safety. We, can we take it back one more time? All right. This is what you're going to see. You're going to see Aaron Rodgers' bootleg. This is the classic bootleg. It's been around for, forever. When this, when Aaron Rodgers' bootleg and he gets outside the pocket, well so said. when these guys see Aaron Rodgers get out the pocket, all they're thinking about is flow coming this way. Flow coming. So this is designed. Hey, we got him. The safety, the corners, they're jumping the, the V route. Let's go to the post. But no a lot one is of expecting this. But, 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 but a lot of times when you say that, just go back to the wide angle one more time. Understand it from a defensive perspective. I don't care what you do on the offense. This guy this guy has deep third. Back this up. guy has middle third. That's your – listen, I'm scheme is one thing. But when you have guys not playing their rules of what you do on defenses, this is what you get. This is the exposed – this is how you right. get exposed. But, but, but it all, of, all, all of it works together. The front the – front when you see Aaron Rodgers rolling and then you see that receiver, when he break inside, what he did to make that route is he straightened that – he straightened the route back yes, up, right. made it look like he was going to that corner, and then went inside. Right. Deception I, 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 is key. Right. Phil, I would say this, Phil. Real quick. In the last two years, there's probably been four of those, those balls completed. No one runs it. Everyone is, is expecting that. That is an amazing concept, amazing right. scheme, amazing call. You In that moment, by Matt LaFleur. That In that play there, Brandon, you see – it's coming into the NFL. More of those deep crossers. Every right. team's running them to have success. Keep going that Let's way. go on up here. <laughs> Enough of that. Really, really good job explaining it. They couldn't run those routes when they were playing as up. No, 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 come on, man. Come Neither on. one of y'all can run this up. Oh y'all were not run run size guys. Oh y'all size guys. Y'all Debo people. Yeah, just, All right, let's go on, back on, to the hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, boom, boom. No, no, we're done. Time is up. It's Jacksonville. No, no, I got favorite guy. No, 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 no. Let's go back. What we got? Watch this catch. Watch this. Watch this. You talking oh, about receivers? Oh, oh, Let's go back. Let's nah. do, no. What? Oh, what wow. this? Wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, you think we're not, Phil? What's going on here? You think we won't? Get it. Get it. No. Oh. 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 First, the fat boys break up now this. <laughs> Come on. I think we weren't going to talk about it. I can't Phil, even. Phil, Phil. It, okay. It, it, it's not that you dropped it. It's the way you dropped it. You know, <laughs> hey, you know it's not even that lay on your face. Here's the bad about. thing. Yeah, I thought I was getting ready to get hit. <laughs> oh. All right, let's go back to the highlights. Jacksonville, Cincinnati, I hate everybody here. <laughs> Seeing red, the Bengals were as Gardner Minshew rifled his team right through Cincinnati's defense. Tight rope along the right sideline. He got it to the eight-yard line. Boy, that, that was bold by Gardner Minshew. Fire to the right corner of the end zone. Touchdown! The Jaguars pressured Andy Dalton and had three interceptions as Cincinnati remained winless. Touchdown, pick six, extends the lead for Jacksonville. Well, we said this was a must win, and they did what they had to do. They got the win. An energized group with Sam Darnold back out there. Here comes a blitz. He looks right, swings it right, and it's intercepted. First pass of the night for Darnold is a pick, throws, and it's intercepted at the goal line. Third turnover by the Jets. Floats one up the seam, and it's intercepted. I have to admit, this is a game I never thought that I would see Sam Darnold play. So the Jets continue to make unmakeable mistakes. Tom Brady and the Patriots cruise to another easy victory. They've now outscored their 2019 opponents 223 to 48. Open, touchdown, Patriots! What a beautiful throw by TB12. Night, night! 7 0, buddy. Phil won the picks. Oh, boy. Well, don't because say it he, so dejectedly. I mean, Be happy for me. Hey, Phil, straight we up pick, your face, man. Let's cut it out. Go ahead, Brandon. We picked the Jets to cover the spread. The, oh, man. And we got smashed. 
Like, are you serious, Jets? So, anyway. Let's go. Let's get to our first game. Packers at the Chiefs Sunday night football. Does Matt Moore have enough to beat Aaron Rodgers, who you are calling the MVP? I didn't never say he was a little, little, little bit. A little bit. I'd say a little bit. He's mean, in the conversation. Do, do Ray, Ray and I look alike? Is that what it is? <laughs> hold on, Phil. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold Wait a minute. Come on, get back. Come on. Come on. Let's go. go there. I think, <laughs> who do you have? The Packers I, here, or the Chiefs? Here, real quick. I think Andy Reid's going to do a really good job with Matt Moore, devise a little offense that helps him. They throw lots of screens, short passes, and he can lob it down the field, but. The, the Kansas City Chiefs defense cannot stand up against Aaron Rodgers. Let's be quick to save some time. I'm going with the Packers. Okay. Anytime Pat Mahomes is missing, man, it's a different ball club when you talk about the Chiefs. Yeah, I'm going with the Packers. Right now, Aaron Rodgers is playing the second best at the quarterback position right now behind <laughs> Kirk Cousins. He just took flu medicine. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Panthers at the 49ers. This is interesting right now, Ooh. Ray. I'm going to start with you. Uh -huh. Niners are undefeated or 6-0 and no, for the first time since 1990. Phil's Giants went to knock out the Niners in the NFC Championship and go on to win a Super Bowl with Jeff Hostetler. Oh. Wow. Oh, yeah, not Phil, for My sure. God. You know what? You know who I'm <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know what? I think, I think, honestly, I think the Panthers are going to give them a tough run, but I think that I think it ends there. I think the 49ers play fast. They are fast. And I think they have enough, man. And I, I really think this team is ready to well, go. Let's see. You can run the ball. You can rush the passer. You're yeah. tough as heck. You're maybe one of the fastest teams in the NFL. Oh, that's the San Francisco 49ers at home. I think they went easily over the Carolina Panthers. I yeah. don't say easily, but I easily. I got the 49ers in this one, too. I mean, they're just playing great ball right now. And it's a lot of chemistry. Um, Eagles at the Bills. Ray, are the Eagles done? They're playing bad ball right now. The Eagles are playing bad football right now. But this is the one game that I'm going to go a little opposite. And I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles because I think Phil is going with the Buffalo Bills. He riding that wagon over there. And I got to catch some, some <laughs> ground. I need some ground. I need some ground. So, you know what? The Eagles got to turn this around. The Eagles got to figure this out, or they're out of the playoffs. Ray, don't do it. They're right. out of the playoffs. So that's why I'm going to go with the Bills. Hey, hey the Eagles, the <laughs> okay. Eagles are a power okay. football okay. team running it. They're a power team up front that really matches up well against the Buffalo Bills. But the Bills' defense, Josh Allen moving around. The Eagles are not fast, though, either. I forgot to say that. I like the Buffalo Bills. They'll play better after that performance last week. Yeah, I mean, they're 5-1. and one. We haven't spent a lot of time talking about the Bills, but this is a really good team. They play Some good people football. are saying, oh, they're, they're strength of schedule, right. but they're 5-1 and one in the national You can only league. play I'm going with schedule. the Bills. Absolutely. I'm going with the Bills. All right. Ah. Oh. Man, it's been bad to us. Vegas special has been bad to us. Phil is 2-1. All right, picking uh, 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 the Vegas special games. You and I are both 1-2. This week's game is the Dolphins at the Steelers. The Steelers are a 14-and-a-half point favorite. Phil, who you have? Because whoever you pick, I'm picking. Oh, oh really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking the Steelers at home. I think they've kind of got their team back organized or whatever. The defense is playing fast. It's tough, uh, physical. They can rush the passer. I think the Steelers are going to cover the spread. Wow. Okay. You think the Steelers are going to cover I think 15 points? No, Ryan Fitzpatrick is back. Yeah, Fitzmagic. That's another reason. Fitzmagic. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Well, let me be simple with this. I'm going to go with the Dolphins because I don't think they're going to cover it. I'm going with the Dolphins because my guy Fitz Magic is back under center. Now it's time to go to the last set of highlights. Turn away, Chiefs fans. Here's Kansas City at Denver. Ugh, brutal. It seemed like business as usual for Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. On third and three, Mahomes under pressure. Throws it left, caught by Herman inside the five. Touchdown! In the second quarter, Mahomes' season took a shocking turn. Fourth down, less than a yard. Demarcus Robinson comes in motion, and Mahomes sneaks it, and somebody better guard that ankle. He might be hurt. Mahomes may be hurt. Oh, no. As all of the Chiefs kingdom holds its breath. A dislocated kneecap sideline Mahomes. His backup, Matt Moore, was able to finish off the Broncos. Go! <laughs> Until Mahomes returns, the Chiefs will need more of the same. This is really one of those days you dream of in sixth grade.
talking about what's going to become an all-time mud bowl. There was plenty of mud, but no touchdowns. Three field goals were all it took for the 49ers to remain undefeated. Nick Bosa will have the exclamation point, oh! and then he will go on the slip and slide. Now they're all sliding. Six and oh. So the 49ers overcome the elements and Washington to stay perfect, which gives us the perfect segue. Time now for Dear Insiders. Mm -hmm. We start with Brandon. Mm -hmm. Rain, mud, and a pond of puddles all over the field. That's real football, according to Ray. So, guys, come on. What's the most fun that you've ever had playing in bad weather? Thanks in advance, the leather helmets, the old guys of oh. America. They're never. I'm a wide right. receiver. Exactly. I get paid to catch the ball. So mm. if we're playing in negative 10 degree mm. uh, right. weather, then my hands are frozen. I don't want to. I, I don't want to play in that. Definitely. If it's raining, we're going to probably hand the ball off 40, 50 times. I hate yeah. bad weather. Oh, oh, wow, oh, Mike, is he being honest? Oh, this receipt. Yes, hey, well, hate. y'all need your nails done? <laughs> I, got, I got them done, but I, I, and I don't want to put mud in them. I got them done, they're clean, and I don't want mud in them. That's just what it is. What about a quarterback? You know what? Your nails are shiny. You just had them done, didn't you? <laughs> I get my nails done. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I get my nails Man. done. Not a good thing for QBs? Hey, listen, for a quarterback, when you run out of the tunnel, and it's pouring rain, snow, oh it's God. extra wind. You just go, here comes another average day. That's all you think. That's what I would think. Hey, listen. It, it's oh, am, tell us. It's, am, <laughs> it's amazing to hear offensive guys' perspective. We have to handle right? the football. Because you guys come out, oh, my gosh, it's raining today, so I can't catch the ball, and they're not going to throw it a lot. It's the best football you will ever play. What? When For you who? Get those type of games. Because guess what? It ain't no you, trick. So you play no beat football. your man. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. So that means you're sitting there like a statue right. going, okay. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. That's the best football. Basically. Yeah. Great. <laughs> right. Nice segue when you say the best man wins. Yeah. Willie Brown, Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. recently passed away. And I know you've got some thoughts about him. Man, I'm going to tell you, like, Willie Brown probably forever changed the way that I saw myself. I met Willie Brown early in 1997, and, and he just grabbed me. He was like, you're one of my guys, you know? We're talking about a man that came from a historical black college, Grambling State University, man, and just 1984 goes into the Hall of Fame. You know, Willie Brown played the position of cornerback the way it was supposed to be played, but he was a better man. Like, I'm telling you, he mentored so many young men. And nobody ever knew the relationship that we had all of these years. I would always check in on him. Papa just checking in on you. And he would always call me and say, boy, you were always doing something different. And I, I used to always just sit there and write. And it's kind of what I do with Jim Brown now is because I don't want that knowledge to be left in their heads. Like, I want that knowledge. And Mr. Brown gave me so much knowledge. I'm telling you, I'm so sorry to hear about him and his family and my heart. It goes out to his family and whatever we can do because he's one of the heroes, man, that made this game for us a, a game that we can appreciate playing. And, and, and I'm telling you, Mr. Brown was one of the greatest, great football player, but he was a better man. Than, than, than ever. Outstanding. Yeah. Raiders, Broncos, uh, just a great, great yeah. player. Yeah. Hey, Some how crazy. pleased were you guys to have Michael Irvin on the set today? You bring on a scale news. of what? <laughs> <laughs> And I tell you what, if you get paid by the word, you're yeah. a rich son gun. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Brandon, your boy. I love That's having him on the show. He brings the energy. Hey, Mike, always, always stay, first of all, always, oh, always stay prepared and travel with two suits. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, come, <laughs> hey, don't come from one show and then come to me with the you same suit on. You wore that same suit yesterday. That's yeah. it for us. We That's thank great. all of it's you for watching. Hours. We'll see you next week right here on Inside the NFL on Showtime. Wait a minute, he wore the same suit. The same suit yesterday with him and Steven Smith. Man. That's a 20 I mean, I'm watching this man yesterday. I'm like, that black and yellow. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so he thought he'd bring it again, right? Oh, oh my God. As soon as he walked in, I go, uh oh. <laughs>